before. <laughs> All right, Edder. Okay. Yeah, we're ready to go. I wonder if we should. If anyone's online, please feel free to say hello. I think that little um, circles with their initial pop up. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there we go. There we go. Oh, good morning. Hi, Dawn. Nice to see you. I'm glad you've joined us. Exciting. Look at all the people. <laughs> oh, Cold Lake. Happy yes. Friday. Nice. Okay. We'll just give people a few minutes to sign on. We're expecting around La 40 Corey, people. Alberta. Wow, awesome. I don't even know where that is. Me neither. Where is that? Tell us, Robin. And we're both Alberta girls, so we yeah. should know that. <laughs> oh, like okay. Like, okay. Hi, Ming Ming. North, North of Bonneville. Oh, okay. okay. All right. Well, that would explain why I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, I've been to Bonneville once. Ooh, and I've been to Cold Ontario. Lake once. Nice. <laughs> You've been to Cold Lake once? Yeah, I went up there. Um, Halifax. Derek was doing his master's degree and had to be in Edmonton for a little while. So I went up and did some of his teaching for him. Oh, so cool. I spent a little bit of time there. Uh, I think I spent about two weeks there just doing some of his classes that oh, people nice. were asking. Yeah. Hi, Cindy. Wow, exciting. Lisa. Very exciting. It is. <laughs> exciting Hopefully in a terrifying we'll kind of way. Yes, <laughs> sort of terrifying. <laughs> this is our first time doing this, so we're a little bit terrified. <laughs> Yeah, we talk about communication and we're losing our minds. <laughs> I left my window open. I'm wondering if I'm going to regret that. I may have sirens up my window. We'll see. <laughs> oh, that's okay. I'm sure the dog's going to be losing her mind at some point. I don't oh, know hello, I'm from Petawawa. <laughs> A new way of communication. Yeah, exactly. I hope everybody has their, their coffee or their tea. Not that we're gonna put you to sleep. Just I'm just saying it's early-ish, depending on where you are. Yes, it's oh, yeah, okay. early. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's 8.30 here in Edmonton, so a little earlier for us than some of you out east. <clears throat> Although normally we'd be at work this early, so I guess yeah, exactly. we're pretty lucky. Is it normal? Is it normal? There is no more sounds. Um, I don't know. What kind of sounds do you want to hear? <laughs> can other people hear us? Yeah, can everybody hear us? Is Melissa the only one that can't? Okay. Okay, I can um, hear you. All right. Or Solia, maybe you can help out uh, Melissa if she's not hearing us. Marsolia is hiding in the background, but she's here to help us. So hopefully she can sort us out. Oh, Arun is saying sign out and sign in. Sometimes okay. there might be some glitches. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Marsolia. <laughs> All right. Well, maybe we'll wait till we're confirmed that her sound is better and then we can um, start at 835. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, we'll give them two more minutes just to see if people are running a bit late and then we will get started. Yeah. This is the first time I've put on makeup and actually done something with my hair for five weeks. So you're very 
you're welcome. welcome. <laughs> what I usually look like, because it's not that nice. Good job. <laughs> I haven't seen her sign back in. Hopefully she does. Mm -hmm. I think we had a few other people on other ones that I've watched that have struggled. Oh, good. Oh, she's Great. Good. Okay, perfect. Awesome. All right. Good morning, Gavin. Okay, so clock is up there. Okay. Not going on the time. I actually confirmed that we didn't need to be on webcam today. So it's still pants optional. <laughs> I actually saw a really funny video. I saw that too. I saw that that he got up and was running around and, his, and everyone was laughing at him. Yep. That would happen to me. Yep. <laughs> That's why I'm wearing pants. I always wear pants. <laughs> pants are never optional. <laughs> no. Oh, awesome. Okay. Okay, well, we will get started then. Uh, thank you, everybody, for signing on. This is so awesome. This is really exciting for us. It is our first time, so please be kind and be patient with us while we sort of learn this new uh, platform for ourselves. We have been practicing on the platform, but um, we will say we're kind of old as dirt, so this technology thing is a little bit um, overwhelming for us. Um, so. We'll give it a try. So welcome to uh, Say What Now? Oh my God, like the things that we come have come out of our mouths um, and we don't want them to and we take people's um, words the wrong way. I know that my husband and I are really struggling with that. Uh, being the only two people, he's the only person I get to talk to other than on the phone or uh, on webcams talking to my team at work. Um, it's can be a little bit challenging. Um, we're getting on each other's nerves, you know, so it's uh, it's challenging to try to navigate that with everything that's going on here, you know. What we're trying to do today is to take a little bit of a deeper dive into one of the very small pieces of our intercom course. Um, we don't get a chance to do that even in the workshop, so we wanted to sort of strip it away and talk about it and talk about it with regards to its relevance um, with what's going on today and how COVID and how being stuck at home and the social distancing is impacting our communication skills. Um, there's so many layers to that right now for us, whether it be how are we communicating with the people outside of our homes and are we communicating well with those people and how are we communicating with those people inside of our homes because um, we're seeing them an awful lot and we're not getting the distance maybe we need from those individuals. I know I've been taking a lot of solo walks and my husband's been welcoming me to do that um, maybe out of frustration but also recognizing that we both sort of need some distance from each other um, so i'm heather garo miller i'm one of the health promotion specialists in edmonton um, and this is carissa hi i'm carissa mckay i am also in edmonton one of the hps's and as you can see on the front screen we have put our email addresses there so if there is anything that came up that you um, had a little bit more of a question about uh, we welcome your questions we also welcome any feedback or thoughts that you have um, or maybe what you would like to see in the upcoming two sessions that are following this um, we aren't therapists or anything so if you've got like <clears throat> deep burning communication challenge issues that's not for us to be able to help you out with unfortunately but we can certainly try to point you in the direction of a resource that might be helpful so i um, open to hearing your thoughts and comments and feedback um, and answering any kind of content related questions that you might have. So please use those um, at your discretion. So before we begin, we do have a bit of a disclaimer that we need to read out to you. Um, just so that you know, this presentation that you are about to view is the intellectual property of the Depart Department of National Defense and any reproduction or transmission of these slides contained in the presentation is strictly forbidden. We'd also just like to remind you that some of the things that might be discussed in um, webinars generally, not so much this one specifically, but they may be of a sensitive nature depending on kind of the ears that you might have around. So they might not always be appropriate for children um, and parental discretion is requested. And we are going to ask you, um, of course, optional, but ask you if you would like to, to share some of your thoughts and ideas. 
but understanding that uh, please understand that people's stories are their own to tell. So anything that we share on this webinar with each other, uh, we expect that it's going to stay here and not be discussed outside of the webinar. And finally, just to remind everybody that this webinar is being recorded and will be available for viewing later on on CAF Connection. And we really do, as Heather said, encourage active participation. But if you'd rather just kind of follow along in the background without using any of the chat video or microphone options, that's absolutely fine as well. This is for your comfort and knowledge and growth and learning and we want it to feel good for you. So before we begin, we kind of wanted to get a sense of who is online this morning. So if you look at the top right side beside the uh, word chat, you'll see polls. And I'm gonna put up a poll here just so that we can find out a little bit more about you. So we'll just ask you to answer that poll and we'll find out who you guys are. Oh, excellent. Yay, we have a nice distribution. I'm excited. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Great. So we've got, I think everybody can see, we've got, um, oh, we're still getting more. <laughs> so awesome. Yay, I'm so excited to see so many serving members have joined us this morning. Mm -hmm. We've really been concerned with um, our lack of uh, access to our D1 uh, emails that we're not able to connect and uh, be able to get some of those members and uh, get this information to them. So that's been our really big struggle for us since we've been at home. So we're really excited to see that many of you online today. So thank you for joining us. So we would also just like to give you a 30 second stretch break because I don't know how long you've been sitting here, but if you haven't already, um, please do grab yourself a pen and some paper because we're gonna get you to write some things down and work through some of the activities as we carry on. So I'm gonna give you, well, maybe not 30 seconds, but run and go now, scavenger hunt, find your stuff. We'll turn on the timer and um, we'll catch you back up here. And we can play. Jeopardy music. Yeah. Do, do, do. <laughs> you don't want us to sing, really. No, you really don't. <laughs> I, right. I had done a post not that long ago that said the thing I'm enjoying the most about being outside and walking with social distancing is that I can have my earbuds in and I can sing as loud as I want and nobody's around to hear it because it doesn't sound that good. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna move on to our first slide. Um, so we wanna ask you what's going on for you right now. Um, there's a lot of things that can be causing stress for us right now. We could be worried, we could be stressed, we can be annoyed and frustrated with a whole bunch of things that are going on. And all of that stuff, whether we recognize that that's what's causing it or not, can impact the way we communicate with each other. It influences, our ability to make good decisions in how we communicate with the people we care about and communicate with the people that we work with, it becomes very challenging. It may even influence the way that you are with people you don't even know. I know I was kind of snide with somebody when I was walking down this trail the other day and this fellow refused to move over and I ended up in the bushes in order to avoid him and I sort of made a bit of a snarky remark and really, What's the point of that, right? Um, and a lot of it's just sort of the stress of feeling that anxiety of what's going on around me. So, you know, there's so much to feel stressed about right now. I know for me, the biggest thing that's causing me stress is sort of the unknown. And I'm sure a lot of you can relate to that. It's that uncertainty of what's going to happen for us moving forward. What does the financial future look like? Do I have the job security that I once had? I've been with the organization for 22 years and never really questioned that until now. And not to say that the uh, organization is being disloyal, it's just sort of the way that things are right now and they may not have an option for me. So those are sort of scary things to sort of have this low level anxiety that I'm walking around with every day. And I know it's impacting the way that I talk, especially with my spouse because he's the person I allow myself to be the most vulnerable with. And so unfortunately he becomes um, a bit of a punching bag for me at times. And it's not fair to him and it's not fair to our relationship, but it's the reality that we're facing right now. 
So if you have any thoughts, um, we just want you to write them down on your paper right now. What is going on for you? What's causing stress? Don't think about it too much. Just sort of let it flow out of you. Um, and the first things that come to mind, what's causing you that kind of stress right now that could impact the way that you talk to somebody? And if anyone is willing to share any of those thoughts, please feel free to do so. So you can certainly keep on writing as uh, we carry on. Um, what we want to, what, what we really want to emphasize and what we really want people to take away with is that that is the ground zero for communication. What is going on for you in the moment is going to impact what you say and how it is perceived by the person every single time. And it's not just about things that are conflict oriented. If you've got stuff that's percolating in your mind and it's keeping you preoccupied and then you ask um, for something like, can you just go please clear the counter? Um, it's going to come out in a way that may be not how you intended it because of the stuff that's going on underneath. So with that, we need to recognize all communication is going to be impacted by that. So the better we are aware of what is going on, the more likely we are going to be able to communicate well. The problem is, is that rather than risking exposing the vulnerabilities that we all have, we armor up. We put on our 20-ton shield and we hide behind this armor that is meant to protect us because we don't want people to see the things that we are feeling or that are causing us stress or anxiety or concern or worry. And so we hide behind that and what that does is it completely challenge or changes the way that our communication comes out because the amount of energy that is required to hold up that shield to hang on to that armor to wear that armor takes so much energy that it takes away from our ability to actually communicate well clearly honestly and authentically with people so when we've got both parties armoring up what is the likelihood that we are actually going to be able to communicate well with one another. It's basically like watching two groups of kids having a snowball fight behind a big snow, snow fort wall. And all that they're doing is lobbing snowballs, hoping that one of them is gonna hit the target, but that big wall is protecting them. So you can't see what's on the other side, you just hope for the best. And that's what it's like when we're trying to um, communicate when we're carrying around all this armor to protect ourselves. I wanna ask you, what does your armor look like? When you think about what are the defenses that you put up? What are the things that you do that are to protect what's sort of underlying all of that? What's happening for you? For me, I tend to get really snippy. I am very quick to temper. I am very critical of uh, the people around me and the things that they do. Um, and I'm picking on the things that are really small. And if I look at them, you know, in a week from now, in a month from now, in a year from now, are any of those things that I'm being critical about going to matter? Probably not. But that's the things that I feel like maybe I have a little bit of control over right now. So I try to grab all of those things to pull in the control. So I become kind of uh, a bit uh, like the... Snickers commercial is a bit hangry, as you might say, without the hunger. <laughs> Just sad and um, anxious, I guess. <laughs> and the thing is, is that our, our, our armor comes from a bunch of different places. Um, I get super hypercritical, super judgmental, and I talk way more than I need to. My husband is the exact opposite. He turtles. He's quiet. He comes from a family of non-talkers, so it becomes really awkward. It's this weird, awkward, one-sided conversation, um, and it's, it's unpleasant. And that's part of how we were brought up. But if you think about all of our military folks, the way that the military trains you to talk is actually it's a, being trained how to listen, right? Like it's a little authoritarian, it's mostly one-sided, not a lot of room for negotiation or discussion. And if you then use that, because that's what you've experienced for however long that you've been in, and you take that style of communication, because it now becomes, you're like, wow, this is good. You know, he talks, I listen. 
If I go sergeant on my family, maybe they will actually hear what I'm saying and they will listen to me. But if you walk through the door and say, wife, prepare to advance, it's unlikely to be met with a very positive result. So we need to recognize that where that comes from, where those armors are developed and how we practice using them is going to impact how we're communicating as well. So if you're willing to share, maybe share some of those things that you do. Are you a little bit short tempered? Uh, do you turtle and run? Uh, everybody deals with those things differently. What do you do to sort of protect yourself right now? And then we're just going to move on, but feel free to share that. Try to listen first. Absolutely. Sure. So when we talk about all of the stuff that's behind the armor, this is what we're talking about. And Maslow's a hierarchy of needs really demonstrates that well. And you can see there's some really basic stuff here that all of us really need. It's just natural human needs. And if we look down right at the bottom, we're th looking at things like security. Uh, we're looking at safety. Uh, we're looking at having the, the resources that we need. Um, and all of those things are really important. But then there's also the other pieces that sort of make us human, make us give us that humanity. And it's that need for friendship, need for family, uh, need for intimacy and self-esteem. And all of that is being so challenged right now. Even the idea of breathing right now is sort of scary. So that safety becomes a little bit uh, of a scary ground to be on. A friend of mine was saying she noticed when she was in the grocery store the other day that every time that she would walk past somebody, she was holding her breath and she didn't notice it at first. And I thought, well, that's really interesting. How often in our lives can we actually say we've been thinking of holding our breath as we walk past people? That's really impacting our feeling of safety and security in our lives. And how is that now rolling into other areas of our lives? And then we think about, you know, the connection that we have with our family and friends is really challenged right now. Um, how are we staying connected to our loved ones? My parents um, are both very ill and they are basically shut in and I'm delivering groceries to them. But other than that, I'm not having that connection with them that they probably really need right now. So trying to find creative ways to be with them as well. But all of that is going to impact how we communicate with each other. When we don't have these basic needs being met, things start to fall apart for us in the way that we communicate. And the problem when those basic needs aren't being met and we're not asking for them to be met or we're unsure of what needs to happen for them to be met is that adds to the armor that we put on. It adds to the fears, the vulnerabilities, the anxiety that we're feeling. And it really starts to take its toll on how we respond or interact with other people. And this, go, this happens at work too, right? Like we can think about situations at work where this is going to happen when if you're at work and there's uncertainty. Um, I can't imagine what it must be like for all of the people that are working in healthcare right now who could all in Alberta be fired after the pandemic. So, you know, there's all sorts of things that are happening in terms of that, those needs and that security that we take for granted that has now sort of been pulled out from under us and that's really affecting um, everybody. So when all that stuff that we need isn't happening, what it ends up being is we all really, at the end of the day, are sort of like an onion. So I might say something and it's the position that I'm taking and it's what you hear and it's what you think that I'm all about, but it's the outside part. So as an example, and this is just an example, I'm really not stressed about this. I just thought it was a good example. Well, I may be a little bit stressed about it, but my example is my position is my husband comes home and he's got groceries and he throws the stuff on the thing. I'm emptying the bag of groceries and I see the receipt. And remember, this is all totally fictitious. I see the receipt and I say, why did you spend so much money at the grocery store? So my position is, what's up with all this exorbitant spending? But underneath that, the interests are the things that I want. What is it that I want? Out of this circumstance, I want there to be enough food on the table. But I also want to make sure that we are being fiscally responsible with the money that we have, given the uncertainty that we're facing. So there's a couple of things that are layered, layered on in that. And below that, even farther, are those needs. And those needs, based on the hierarchy that you just saw, are the needs for security, safety, and certainty. 
And when at the very core of what we want and need, we're not getting it, it is going to come out differently. And instead of saying, I'm so scared that we're not going to be able to afford groceries, I say, why did you spend so much money at the grocery store? So it's a completely different message. So we have to recognize that we have these layers and all of us have that. So when we take a look at how that sort of transcends itself into the bigger picture, we have an image which most people will recognize. It's two triangles which are supposed to be icebergs. And what we know about icebergs is what? That the majority of the stuff that we really need to be worried about is below the surface of the water. But all we see are the positions. The other piece that's really important in this is the position that I have is a limited possible outcome or solution based on my perspective. And having not had a conversation perhaps with the other person, I don't know what is going on for them. So I am assuming what their position is until I sit down and talk to them or they respond back with, well, what do you mean? I just needed to get groceries. Well, so that's their position. So my assumption is, oh, they just want to get groceries and they don't care how much money they spend. It's in my mind. It's that conversation that is having, nobody's confirmed anything with anybody else, but we're stuck there above the surface of the water. The interests grow out of the values that we have. So the stuff that we don't see, that those are our needs, our desires, our concerns, fears. That's what motivates our behavior. You act very differently when you're afraid or nervous or angry than when everything is moon, spoon, and June. So your behavior is really dictated by what's going on. And that's what's happening below the surface, which we may or may not see because we are armored up. We are hiding behind that 20 ton shield. So only when we get to a place where that person feels like um, we can have a conversation, can we start to dig a little bit deeper? And then maybe what we end up finding is that there is actually something that we have in common. There is a shared interest that can become the common ground from which we move forward. But because we very rarely try or know how to get below the surface of the water, we just get stuck at the top in those positions, assumed or otherwise, and we don't make any, any progress. What we're going to ask you guys to do is actually just to do a little bit of artwork here and just draw out um, the iceberg just as we, you see it here. So on the one side, write the acronym Peach BFV down the side. We will tell you how to fill that in later. And then draw, uh, quickly sketch out your icebergs and then think about one thing that's going on in your life right now that is causing conflict. Maybe it's with your spouse. Maybe it's with a friend, maybe with a coworker or your child, uh, something that you guys are sort of stuck on and it seems to keep popping up for you. And just write down that position that you have and the position that you believe that they have. And obviously we don't want you to write, leave room to write here later. We will write here later. <laughs> so take a minute to do that for yourselves. And I just want to kind of share an idea of what that looks like as you're drawing that out. So I have a good friend um that is a clinical exercise therapist and she has obviously had to stop doing hands-on work with her clients and her company has asked her to go online and doing assessments and programming online right now for them their expectation is that she actually is able to see as many clients as she was when she was in person with those individuals and she does not feel that it's realistic uh, for her because there's so many things that are in the way. There is the technology that's slowing her down and her clients down because a lot of them are older people that don't know how to tap into some of these resources. So that's always, that's been a bit challenging. And then to actually do an assessment on somebody without touching them, um, if uh, for those of you that have any understanding of that, is very challenging. So her position is that it's not realistic for me to do this many assessments in a day and do them justice. And the position of the company is that you will do these assessments and you were able to do it before, there's no reason you can't now. So that's kind of the idea that we're looking for. So once you've done that, we're gonna talk about that Peach BFB. So in order to get a better understanding of what's going on for you, because a lot of times we are really bad at self-reflection. 
we kind of like the armor that we put on. And I just want to make a comment because I noticed that Arun had made an interesting comment about his armor or her, I'm sorry, I don't make an assumptions and I don't know which is which. Um, they had said, I'm staying positive by listening to music and working out. And I actually really like that notion of armor being him. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, I really like the, the notion of an armor being something that's positive and protective. So I do really like that, that concept as well. Um, but we're talking more about the armor that we're using to protect ourselves against, right? So not the stuff that we're inoculating ourselves with to be proactive and, and able to deal with things well. We're using armor as the example of um, so that nothing comes out and nothing comes in and we're, it's like a defense mechanism. So that's how, that's the image that we're trying to, to create here. But I really like that notion of it being positive as well. So what we want to try to find out for ourselves is why am I holding on to that notion? Why is, why did you spend so much money at the grocery store? Why is that my position? And the only way that we can do that is by digging a little bit deeper. And the question is, what do you have to lose? What do you have to lose by asking a question that's hard of yourself? The thing that we also have to remember is in doing Peach BFE, we can really only do it for ourselves. We cannot fill in that for the other party. That is for us to have a conversation about with them at some point in future, but I need to know what's going on for me first. Communication is really only ever about what am I doing? How am I contributing to this? There is no guarantee that even if you were to do everything right, that the person is going to give you the response that you expect or hope for because we can't control what they do. We can only control how we engage in that process. So the things that we want to find out about ourselves, about what's causing us to have this position, are the peach BFE, the priorities. What's important to you right now? So priorities for a lot of people right now are just making ends meet, um, making sure that things are going to be okay, that uh, between paycheck and paycheck, things are going to be all right. Expectations might be that hopefully at some point this ends, um, that things are going to go back to quote unquote normal, um, or that... The expectation is in this case that we're both on the same page when it comes to going to the grocery store and getting groceries. You know, we have a budget, we're going to stick to it. That would be an expectation. The assumption is that you then follow it. Um, concerns are, again, like how long will the money run or be there? How long are we going to be in this situation? Um, are there going to be grocery items at the store? Maybe he spent so much because he saw that there was toilet paper and he stocked up. I don't know, right? So there's all kinds of things that might be happening. Hopes, beliefs, fears, all of those things are going to factor in and they're going to be different for different people in different circumstances. And our hopes, beliefs and fears right now are probably really different than they were five weeks ago. We might have been really thinking about um, our trip that's planned in September or um, the posting that we we're going to be going on because we got the message, but now that's been put on hold. Um, you know, all of those kinds of things are going to be impacted. And below all of that are all those values. and. The, th the threat of a value being undermined is really hard for us because values are at the core of who we are. Values are what make us who we are. They're based on our beliefs and it comes from our upbringing and the things that we believe in. And those things are threatened. Again, we tend to um, want to protect and um, hide or defend or um, win. And I think that that's the other piece that we have to recognize is just because we, we feel that maybe there's a conflict, it's not necessarily a, a win-lose proposition. We just need to find that middle ground because maybe we both have a valid point, but we can't get there because we're stuck on the tips of those icebergs. So what we'd like you to do is go back to your drawing uh, and fill in what some of those peach BFVs might be for you. So if you think about um, my example of my friend that's the exercise therapist, when I think about her priorities, her priorities right now are probably to take care of her own mental health because she's finding that the pressure that's been laid on her is making that a little bit sketchy um, and to take care of her family as well. But she also wants to do a good job and contribute in some way that's meaningful and not shortchange the people that she is um, dealing with. So that's her priority. What is her expectation? is to have a reasonable expectation from her employer about what can be accomplished right now. Her assumption right now, honestly, is that they don't care about her needs or even the client's needs because they're not even being provided the most 
basic of um, tools that they need. Like she's asked for them to uh, be able to deliver uh, exercise bands to her clients and they're basically, well, they can use soup cans. So it's really limited how she can actually um, help her client as well. So her assumption is not a very positive one. She's assuming that they just don't care about her or truly care about their client. They only care about the bottom line. And, you know, her concern right now is that she is not serving her client well and she is concerned that she is actually going to have a breakdown because she's not handling the stress of it well. So that's kind of the idea. I'm not going to go through all of them, but it gives you sort of an idea of what we're asking you to think about. Because if you can't get clear about this, then it's going to be very difficult to walk through that with the person you're in conflict with. If you can't express that clearly, then you'll get stuck in your position with that person. And when you're clear about where you are and what your PHBFB is, then you can start to ask some of those questions of your partner or, or the person you're in conflict with and find out more about what's going on for them. Hopefully what happens is, as Carissa said, you're going to find out that there's some things that you both agree on. And that's a great place to start. For sure. And the thing to remember as well is um, th this isn't a this isn't a process that we're using for something like, um, hey, when are we going to the car wash or um, whose turn is it to walk the dog? Like, I mean, you might you still need to recognize what's going on for you. Right. Like that baggage that you have that's affecting how you're saying things. But this process is for those things that are are really sort of bigger, potentially longer standing long time ingrained issues that just never seem to go away. Things seem to be fine and then stress and tension happens and it bubbles back up to the surface and boom, there it is again, right? That means it's just never been resolved. So we're not talking about doing this every time you think about opening your mouth. Okay, so I'm asking him to make me toast. Uh, should I ask, wonder what his, is? no, we don't, that's not the, that's not the point, right? We're, we're talking about bigger things here. So what we hope comes out of this exercise is that you recognize at the end of the day that we're all just little onions. We're all little onions with lots of layers, some of which we're prepared to share, some of which we may never share with others, um, but there's enough stuff that needs to be transparent or apparent that we can have communication. Because at the core of those little onions are our needs. And when they are not being met, when you are at work and you consistently feel like you are being underutilized, undervalued, um, and have not felt like you've been able to work to your full potential, your needs as a person for fulfillment and having felt like you've contributed meaningfully are not going to be met. And that is going to affect you as, as a soldier or as a civilian staff. So we need to recognize that. And then when those issues can start to be addressed at some level, and maybe they can't. That's the other thing that we have to really be aware and cognizant of as well, is sometimes the situation that you find yourself in is not changeable. And the only thing that can change is your desire or your ability to alter how you choose to interact in that scenario. That's a whole nother um, topic, whole nother webinar series, but just to, to, to really make that clear. But we all have those needs. We're all just little onions. So the thing that we have to recognize, though, is if we want to find out about that, and if we take it just back to the home front for a minute, because it's a little bit easier, we have to know that we are able to share without being ridiculed or demeaned or dismissed, the other person has to feel that as well. And if that isn't happening, we're still not going to be able to get it, have any breakthroughs, make any progress. But the problem is, is we're often still both armored up. Even, even married people, even people who have been in relationship for years, you go, you wake up in the morning, you put your armor on and you go to bed at night and you still leave a little bit of armor on. Right. Like the, the intimacy that we think that we want to have, it's there, but we're wearing armor. So it's hard. So there's there's so much to cover in, in an hour's webinar. But like just just be aware we are really good at keeping ourselves protected. So we talked a lot about our um, interests and needs, but how do we find out what's behind the other person's shield? What is actually 
the motivation for how they are behaving. Because we make a lot of assumptions about the people around us and what their intention is. Um, and I think that oftentimes they're, we're wrong. I know I am often wrong about what is happening with my um, husband and how I perceive what he says. And when I do check it out, uh, I'm usually wrong. So I think that when we get better at asking some of those questions, um, we're going to find out a lot about the people around us and hopefully have healthier, better relationships because we're diving deeper into those relationships with individuals and we're getting to know them on a whole new level. Whether it be that spouse we've been with for 10, 20 years, we're still going to get to know them on a deeper level or whether it's Carissa, who I work with every day, um, those are also people that I want to have healthy relationships with them. Maybe I don't want to hug it out with everybody that I work with, but I do want to have a healthy relationship with those individuals and know them on somewhat of a deeper level because it helps us to be better co-workers and employees. And we just are able to, especially in the line of work that we do, able to give more back to the people that we work with when we can connect with each other. So it's just some food for thought. We're actually not going to talk too much about finding out about that other person's needs and wants today because we really felt that the first thing you needed to do was to start with you and to really dig deep for yourself and find out where those hierarchy of needs are for you right now and what's impacting you. If you tune in next Friday with us, we're going to talk about listening and how to do that better and the importance of being a good listener. And in doing so, asking the kinds of questions that will get the kinds of answers you're looking for. So being curious about the other person's needs and wants, that's how we're gonna get to their interests and their needs. So hopefully you'll tune in next week. Because what we would like is someday when we're allowed to you know, hug again, and even for you non-huggers out there, even a and even an elbow bump at this point, I think would be some progress. Um, once we able, when when we feel we can step out from behind our shield and take off our armor and be authentic with one another, and we're not talking holding hands and singing kumbaya either, right? Like we're we recognize what the limits are to those sorts of things. But when we are able to be a little bit more of who we are and share that freely without worry of judgment it's going to be easier to work through conflict and it's going to be easier to deepen those relationships because at the end of the day we all want to feel understood and valued we all want to feel like we matter and that what we have to say matter and that our feelings are legitimate and get a little bit of validation so i think that that's a really important end goal for us but this is a hard exercise, right? It's hard for people to dig deep. We don't like to shine the light on the parts of us that need work. We don't like to say, oh, well, it's because I am snippy and judgmental and hypercritical. That was my Lenten goal. I really, really sucked. My husband and my daughter both said, Lent needs to be about seven times longer, mom, because you really sucked <laughs> this year. So um, I, I, I blew it. I need to start over. But uh, we have to be able to reflect on that. And so in order to do that, we need to practice because this is something that we're not good at. So what we've done is we've created an opportunity for you to maybe do a little bit of practice so that you can have a better sense of how you react or overreact or shut down or lash out or whatever it is that your go-to is. So we've made um, a handout, which is in the download area of your um, screen. So don't do it now because I don't know what happens if you push it now. I think everybody goes away. So just hold on. We'll let you, we'll give you an opportunity to do that. So when you're, what you're going to do is you're going to print the booklet. So it's just a sheet like this and then you're going to fold it in half and it's going to be the back and the front and then all of the pages. If you can print double-sided, that's awesome. Print double-sided. It'll make your book be kind of a little bit nicer, but if not, you're going to fold the pages in half and you're gonna stack them all up so that the open side is all on one. My origami is not good. So all the open sides are here and you're gonna stick those folded side, like the, the whole corner is gonna be the page and you're gonna stick that into your book. And then you're gonna have three pages that even if you can't print double-sided are going to be your little double-sided books. And they're little tidbits that say, I said something kind to dot, dot, dot. I was grateful for dot, dot, dot. 
Today, I showed appreciation to fill in the blanks. I took responsibility for my feelings and actions by, right? So just different ways that we can start to take a little bit of ownership for the things that we're doing ourselves. You can print them as many times as you want and have as many pages. There's dates on them, but you know, whatever, it's, it's all good. So be creative. Color in the margins, doodle, draw, make pictures, um, whatever it, whatever works. Share it with your family. Give it to your kids. The sooner they know how to be authentic with themselves and be accepting of the things that they're feeling and take responsibility for their actions, the better we're all going to be um, as a society. And we printed, or we did it in black and white on purpose because let's face it we're all printing from home and that's expensive so uh we went black and white so it's a little bit uh boring which is why you need to add your own color to it yeah so we wanted to um bring up the resources that come up and if you've done our other webinars you'll see that they are the same ones but we wanted to highlight a couple uh today that really um resonated with us with regards to the topic that we're talking about the top one is your sif map or your canadian forces member assistance program all uh, members, serving members and their families can use this line to uh, get the uh, help that they might need. And it's okay to need some help um, because, again, Carissa and I aren't therapists. We're here as educators and sometimes we need more. Sometimes people need more. They need somebody to talk to. And we often think of that person that we share and care and uh, tell our secrets to as being the people around us that we love, like our spouse. but we're not very objective with those individuals because of our relationship with them and there's a lot of history there and sometimes it's just nice to talk to somebody that's a bit objective they don't really have um any anything that's in the game here that's going to impact them so they're able to listen in an objective way and sometimes it, all it takes is a couple of um chances to have that conversation and guess what you're going to do most of the talking if you call anyway um, but they will give you up to seven sessions free um, and all they find out about you is your rank and your element everything else is confidential so it's a really nice resource and again your spouse and your children um, over the age of 18 i believe can use it i'm not positive that the other one that we wanted to highlight was the family information line and that is run through the MFRCs across the country. And they have social workers on staff that are specifically there to deal with family issues. So your children um, or spousal uh, relationships, that's what they're there for. I know our MFRC here in Edmonton is doing um, virtual uh, counseling. So take a look and see what's available for you right now if you're feeling like things are sort of at the brink. I know I've seen lots of uh, little memes about uh, the divorce rate skyrocketing after the pandemic. So don't let that happen to your family. Um, if you guys are struggling, reach out and ask for help. There's nothing wrong with asking for help. So we wanted to leave you with a few thoughts today. Again, as you noticed, we didn't speak a lot about how you're going to communicate with somebody because honestly, it needs to start with you. The first thing that needs to happen is get to know yourself on a deeper level. What motivates you? What's underlying all of this stuff that's going on? What is the armor that you put on? And Luna is going to um, growl at whoever's outside of their window is right now. <laughs> oh, the realities of working from home, right? <laughs> um, be honest with yourself. That's probably one of the hardest things. We need to be honest with ourselves about what's going on for us, but we also need to recognize honestly that there are these things that exist for everybody, right? This is going on for everybody. So that person that Heather had to run into the bush to avoid might have stuff going on and he didn't even maybe see that Heather was walking down the path, right? He could have been so in his own head that it wasn't about screw social distancing, I'm staying in the middle of the path, he might just have found out that his grandma um, is in a, a home that has had an outbreak. Right? We don't know what's going on for people. So we need to cut some people a lot more slack than we maybe have in the past. But we need to give ourselves a bit of a break most times. And, and we need to not jump to conclusions and make assumptions. So we need to be honest with ourselves and know that people are likely making assumptions about us. But what are we doing to create them or give them that opportunity, right? So a little bit of more self-reflection that's sometimes needed.
Great. Um, yes, so it's honestly about getting real with yourself and about the things that you would like to do differently or like to do better because let's face it, all of us have things about ourselves that we don't particularly like. I know that there's a lot of things about me that I wish was different and I think sometimes walking away from conversations with my husband, oh man, I suck, you know, and I'm not helping the situation. So if I can get real with those things and be honest with myself and then be honest with him, then it's going to deepen my relationship with him and improve how we communicate with each other. But it's scary to do. It's still scary to do after I've been with my partner for 12 years and it's still a really scary part of our relationship to dive deep. And we need to also recognize that this, what we're experiencing right now, is brand new for us. We've not done this before. So we have a huge learning curve that we need to uh, navigate and, and learn how to do well. And we're not going to all be great the first time we try something. Some of the rock stars out there, they're like, oh, deliver by virtual platform, easy peasy lemon squeezy. And others of us are like, oh crap. Um, okay, hopefully I don't suck. Uh, and then the notion of introverts have been training for this for their whole lives. They're like, what? I don't have to see people. This is awesome. Right? Those of us who need, who I'm a hugger. I am in hug withdrawal. Like my daughter is like, run away, run away. <laughs> she doesn't want to be hugged anymore because I got two people that I can hug right now. So um, yeah, Walter, I love that. Say hello to strangers when I go shopping. Most people don't talk or, I, you know, it's, the fear is there. So we just need to reach out in a, a kind of a uh, exhibition of humanity and, and try to, to do that so that we feel like we maybe can't have a conversation, but at least we've made that connection um, because we are still a social being. You know, even the introverts among us need connection. Yep. I'm, I'm a total introvert, but I'm also a hugging introvert. So I'm really missing that connection and being able to see my son um, and give him a hug. And I really miss that piece, you know. Um, so that's been really challenging for me. I know my dad said that uh, when I came out there, because him and I are very much alike that way, that he was going to hug me whether I liked it or not. And I said, nope, not going to happen, Dad. And my dad is in congestive heart failure, so he doesn't move very fast these days. So I said, I can outrun you still. <laughs> so he's like, I know. <laughs> So, um, but I am trying to connect with them. I try to FaceTime him and call him every day so that he's getting something. I can't touch him, but I can connect. Honestly, at the end of the day, guys, we really need to be kind to ourselves right now because this is hard um, and it's new for all of us. It's new challenges for all of us um, and it's, it's the unknown, right? So be kind to yourself and be kind to the people around you as much as you possibly can. You know, make eye contact when people are willing to do so and say hello um, and just try to offer up as much of yourself in the kindest way possible to other people. Because when we do that, it actually helps us too. It makes us feel better. It makes us feel more connected. It makes us calmer and kinder as well. So what we would invite you to think about is um, everything that we've talked about today. Next session is going to be, as Heather said, on um, listening. And we're not actually going to get to to talking and having authentic conversation until the third session because we all already talk. Um, but what we really need to learn is how to reflect uh, about ourselves and how to listen. So part two is listening. And then maybe we'll do a little bit on talking um, at the end. So we would be really thrilled if you were able to join us for those pieces. and. Um, in the interim, take care of each other as, as you can, stay healthy, and um, we are still all in this together. Oh, and there was a note, I just want to say, if there's people who, for whatever reason, can't um, download the app, uh, the thing, or don't have a photocopy or a printer, or I don't know, whatever, whatever the issues might be technologically, but if you still would like to have it at some point to save, um, we have a list of the registrants. We don't have it, but Ottawa has it. So if you are interested, you can somehow let them know that they can email it to you and then they will be able to send that as a PDF. I think the intent, uh, or solely, or solely is just going to email it to everybody. So if you don't want it, just hit delete, okay? Yeah. Uh, but we will send it out to everybody for those of you that couldn't download or don't have a printer accessible right now, okay? Perfect. 
Thank you very much, everybody. Um, so if you have any questions, we'll stay online for a few minutes to make sure that we've had answered anything. And we really appreciate you logging in and hopefully we've been able to um, help you out in some little way today. High five. Awesome. <laughs> nice comments. Thanks, Cindy. Sending you a hug back. Oh, high fives. Yay. I oh, like the high fives. <laughs> Virtual high fives. High fives. You're welcome, New Brunswick. I can't believe the word virtual has entered the <laughs> lexicon. No, it's not Every strange, day. right? It's like something out of a movie. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, like something so. I watched in the 80s on a movie. <laughs> actually, my uh, Brad and I were watching, um, well, I don't know if he was actually watching or if it was just me, but we were watching Back to the Future. and uh, It's just so funny to see what we thought the future was going to look like back then, right? <laughs> no. Ooh, it thumbs up and a high five. Awesome. Thanks, Nicole. I know, I feel like, what's the movie with, um, oh gosh, no, I can't think, Keanu Reeves, what's that one? Where he does the slow motion thing. Yes, Matrix, the Matrix, yes. right? Yes. The other We're going to we all watching, unplug. We watch, yes, we watched the whole Terminator series. Oh, and I think the, the last one that was sort of done in the 80s, 90s, was projecting to 2017. Oh gosh. <laughs> and I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah, none of that came true, thankfully. <laughs> but, mm. you know, totally. we're getting there, I guess. Totally. We're stars now. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord. I kind of wanted to wear a paper bag over my head to teach because <laughs> I would feel more comfortable, but. There's <laughs> <laughs> a kitty right. Okay, so I think that, um, doesn't seem like there's any questions. So yeah, Heather, well done. Thank you, you too. Thanks. All right, we will see you at the meeting, I guess. See you at the meeting. Yes. Bye everybody. Bye everyone. Thanks, Rosalia. Thank you.